Okay, welcome once again, my learners of P5, okay? Uh, I've been missing you ever since we had the last lesson. I hope many of you have been missing me too. Welcome to our uh, 21st lesson ever since we started. As usual, I want you to learn when you are settled. Therefore, can we please settle in one minute, leave whatever you are doing, get to that place where you normally study from, okay? Get your pen, don't forget a book and a pencil, and settle down. I think one minute is enough, okay? All right, I believe everyone is settled now, and uh, we are still continuing to look at our topic, vegetation of Uganda. This is social studies, of course, for those of us who are joining us for the first time, okay? Uh, and uh, in today's lesson, we are going to focus at savanna vegetation or tropical grasslands. Remember in the previous lesson, we looked at the different types of natural vegetation and I promise that we, shall, we will be looking at one by one. So in today's lesson, we are going to look at savanna vegetation or tropical grasslands, okay? I remember emphasizing this spelling for savanna I told you it can have letter H at the end. You can write it without letter H. You can decide to end at A. All spellings are correct. So once again, can we spell the word savanna? Savanna, S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H. In the previous lesson, we had savanna without H. So I brought it here so that we can get used to the two spellings, okay? So I left you with some work some activity that was very simple. Actually, when I was coming for this lesson, I was thinking of leaving out the corrections for today because I believe everyone hammered those, those simple, simple questions. And somebody is saying, ah, but there was something that I wasn't clear about. Okay, don't worry. Okay, let's try to quickly do corrections for that work. Number one was talking about define the term vegetation distribution. So vegetation distribution, this is the way vegetation is spread in an area. Vegetation distribution is the way vegetation is spread in an area. Question two, write down any two factors that influence vegetation. We had many, but we can uh, have climate, altitude, drainage, nature of the soil, talk about latitude, okay? Then question three, how do the following factors affect the vegetation of an area? And part, and part A is talking about soil fertility. Remember we said you can say soil fertility or nature of the soil. So we looked at two sides. Soil can be fertile, soil can be infertile or poor. So uh, areas with fertile soils have thick vegetation. Areas with fertile soils have thick vegetation. That's one alternative. You can use the other alternative by saying areas with the pool or infertile soils have scattered vegetation. Then the second factor is relief. How does relief affect, uh, affect the vegetation of an area? So you can find in mountainous areas have specific kind of vegetation. Okay, so you can say mountainous areas have uh, a specific kind of vegetation. Okay, then when it comes to, to climate, climate, remember we talk about two things, rainfall and temperature. So you can have still two alternatives. Areas that receive plenty of rainfall have thick vegetation. Okay, the other way around, you can also say areas that receive little rainfall have scattered vegetation. Then, with the drainage, here we majorly looked at the water bodies. Areas near water bodies have thick vegetation. Then areas far away from water bodies have scattered vegetation, okay? Uh, question four, which type of natural vegetation covers most parts of Uganda? If you are to reflect on the map that we had that shows the vegetation zones that we have in Uganda, which one covers the largest part? You'll find that is savanna vegetation, okay? 
Then five, give three human activities that can destroy the vegetation of an area. We had very many of them. You can talk about bush burning, talk about deforestation, talk about swamp drainage, talk about industrialization. Is that okay? So that was our activity for the previous lesson. I want to request those ones that messed up with at least one number. You spare time and write correction is so neatly. Is that okay? Yes, so for now, let's focus on our today's lesson. And uh, just like I told you, we shall be looking at savanna vegetation. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to define grassland. I expect you to define grassland. Remember, this type of vegetation, we call it savanna uh, vegetation or savanna grasslands or tropical grasslands. So we need to know, what does the word grassland mean? So you have to know this by the end of this lesson. Then I also expect you to identify the two types of grassland. In other words, what are the two types of savanna vegetation? Because it is savanna vegetation is further divided into two types. Then three, I expect you to state the characteristics of savanna vegetation. In other words, how can somebody be able to identify that this type of vegetation is savanna? What are those things that can show a person that this is savanna vegetation? Those are the ones we are referring to as characteristics of savanna vegetation. Then four, I also expect you to identify reasons why savanna vegetation is suitable for animals. Why do most animals, uh, wh why do most wild animals like living in savanna regions? So by the end of this lesson, you know all those reasons. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, let's move on to our session one. And in this case, we are going to focus on defining savanna grassland. On defining savanna grassland. I told you savanna has a variety of names. Savanna vegetation, savanna grassland, tropical grassland. So when I mention any of them, don't get confused. Okay? So in this case, what does grassland mean? That's a very simple question that everyone can generate a response to that. Then the tool, identify the two types of savanna vegetation, okay? You might have come across uh, this through your brother's books or your friend's books who has gone through P5 class or another class where they teach about vegetation. So can you think about those two questions very quickly and we move? Okay. Let's now proceed and have a look at this. We were told to think about what grassland means. So grassland, uh, basing on this picture, grassland is a large area of land covered by grass. Grassland is a large area of land covered by grass. Just like when you look at this picture here, this one is living along these animals and the trees. The rest you can see, this is grass, okay? So when you check in this picture, it is majorly covered by grass. So if you have such a place in your area that is very large and there is grass in that area, that is savanna vegetation. It always has scattered trees. That's why you see in this area we have only one, two. Only the rest is grass. So grassland is a large area of land covered by grass. And when we talk about uh, the types of savanna, the types of savanna vegetation or savanna grassland, there are two. Uh, these are, we have what we call savanna grassland, okay? This is dry savanna. Then we have what we call savanna woodland. This is wet savanna. We can quickly look at uh, the characteristics of savanna vegetation. What are those things that show you that this kind of vegetation is the savanna we are talking about. So in which way can one identify savanna vegetation? We can try to think about this. Just like I showed you the picture, mm -hmm. we can even get back here. What are those things that somebody can look at in this picture and be able to say this is savanna vegetation? Okay, uh, let's compare what you have come up with with what I have here. Characteristics of savanna vegetation. One, it has tall grass. It has tall grass. 
trees are scattered, just like you saw in the picture. We only have there two trees. Uh, trees change color during rainy and sunny season. Meaning during rainy season, these leaves are evergreen. When a sunny season comes, you find these leaves turning yellow. Okay? Then, trees shed leaves during dry season. And this is done to reduce transpiration. So the trees in the savanna region that shed their leaves during the dry season, we refer to them as deciduous trees. Can everyone say deciduous? Again, deciduous. So let's spell this word deciduous. Deciduous, D-E-C-I-D-U-O-U-S, deciduous trees. So if you ask what are deciduous trees, these are trees that shed their leaves during dry season. And why do deciduous trees shed their leaves during a dry season? To reduce on transpiration. To reduce on transpiration. Or to reduce on the rate of transpiration. Okay? So these things here can show someone that this region has savanna vegetation. There is a, a, a note here. Okay? Examples of deciduous trees are acacia and then baobab. Just like in this picture, yes, we have the acacia here. So the tree species that you expect to find in the savanna region are majorly two, acacia and then what we call baobab. Is that clear? Yes, let's now proceed. Uh, let's look at our session three, where we want to look at reasons why savanna vegetation is suitable for animals. Why do you think most animals like to live in the savanna region? Why do you think the government likes so much setting up game parks in the savanna regions? So, can you think about that? Why do you think savanna vegetation is suitable for setting up the game parks? Meaning it favors these wild animals. How? That's what we need to know. Okay? Yes. Uh, let's compare what you have come up with with what I have here. Reason is why savanna vegetation is suitable for wild animals. Okay? This kind of vegetation has plenty of pasture and water for animals. Remember, most animals feed on pasture. Okay? So in this case, animals are favored because they can be able to get the pasture that they can feed on easily. That's why Many of them like staying in the savanna region. Likewise, I mean, uh, in the same breath, you find such regions have very many water bodies. And these wild animals need to drink water. Therefore, they would rather choose to go and stay in the savanna region where they can easily access the water plus the pasture. Okay? Then, uh, savanna vegetation provides safe shelter for animals. Most animals live in the bush, okay? These wild animals live in the what? In the bush. So that savanna, that tall grass can easily provide a home for these wild animals. Then, lastly, savanna vegetation has a complete food chain. We have those wild animals that feed on pasture. We have those ones that feed on the flesh. So being that in the savanna region, there is a variety of these animals, it becomes so easy for each animal to get what it can feed on. Those ones that can feed, uh, that feed on flesh can easily get those small animals that can provide them with flesh. Those ones that feed on pasture can also easily access uh, their feeds from the tall grass. Is that okay? So when you, for instance, asked by maybe your grandfather, your grand, or another person, why do you think most game parks are located in the savanna? region. You can give any of the reasons we have here. Okay? So uh, we are coming to the end of our lesson and therefore I'm going to leave you with an activity that I expect you to write so neatly. Uh, don't, don't, get, don't do this activity during the same time that you're eating so that I find the whole book is, is stained with your food. Okay? So settle in one place and write the activity that I'm going to leave behind clearly. We love you.